Hello, everybody. Uh, today, I'm going to talk on a very, very unique topic uh, because we are living in a digital world and uh, there is a lot of digital intoxication. And I'm going to talk on a topic on the endocrine aspects of digital detoxification. Well, somebody said, peace comes from disconnecting and reconnecting. And that is the scope of my talk. So when you look at the whole philosophy of this, of connecting and reconnecting, the need of the R is to shift towards positive and promotive health. I don't have any duality and conflict of interest for this talk. And clearly digital detox is something which we need to learn, unlearn, and try to see whether we can be committed for one hour of digital detox every day. That is really the objective of my current talk. I have a disclaimer and a warning. Though I don't have any duality and conflict of interest for this talk, it's an emerging field. The evidence base is not robust and reproducible. And there is a lot of power in the word detoxification. Often it is used by lay people in a surreptitious way. And it is important to recognize it correctly and use it correctly. How common is it? Well, Deloitte conducted a survey in 2015, almost eight, nine years back when they found more than 60% of smartphone users check their social media platform every five minutes prior to going to bed and within 30 minutes of waking up. And my first take-home tip for everybody today listening to this talk is try to avoid social media completely before going to bed or after getting up. So digital detox fundamentally is defined as a period of time when a person voluntarily refrains from using digital devices like smartphones, computers, social media platforms. And this form of a detoxification has gained popularity as individuals have increased their time spent on digital devices and internet. Well, we know that there has been a lot of technological overuse. And this extended overuse of technology has been found to reduce quality of sleep, causes eye strain, visual defects, and has also led to increased occurrence of migraine headaches. So there is a small but a sustained association between cluster headaches, migraine headaches, and different types of headaches. A recent survey found that more than 7,000 participants, 70% of people who use technology on the screens, experience some form of a digitalized screen. And I'm sure many of you all have also done it as you talk it. And screen possessing technological devices are going to cause digitalized screen and digital headaches. Research on the popular technological devices like cell phones and computers on sleep have suggested <clears throat> that the light which is emitted from the screen switch off the melatonin production, which is a very important endocrine biochemical regulator of duration and character of sleep. So that's very, very important to recognize. A new term <clears throat> has emerged, and that is called as dopamine fasting. We have known intermittent fasting. We know religious fasting. Religious fasting is structured and unstructured like Ramadan, like Lent, <clears throat> like we have the popular Shravan fasting coming up now. Similarly, we have the intermittent fasting of different natures, alternate day, daily, 8, 16, so on and so forth. So the dopamine fasting has proponents and opponents. The proponents of dopamine fasting argue that this is a way to exert a bigger self-control, a self-discipline over one's life. And the New York Times famous Neely Brown's technology journalist said, that dopamine fasting made her subjects' everyday life more exciting and fun. And all of you all, if you do a digital detox, it's nothing but dopamine fasting. It's something which is very recognizable. And this has been really a craze or a fad in the Silicon Valley. An accountant wise said, the idea of abstaining from anything fun in order to increase your mental clarity is appealing. And you and the notorious biohackers of Silicon Valley are on the same wave. Clearly, digital detox is a form of dopamine detox, fasting is a form of digital detox. It is temporarily abstaining from addictive technologies like social media, listening to music on technological platforms and internet games, even doing yoga, pranayam, surya namaskar. And there is an extended period of a temporary deprivation of social interaction and eating also. The term has its origins and was widely promoted by a life coach, Improvement Pill, on the YouTube in November 2018. This is a maladaptive fact, Harvard researcher recently said. 
and other critics said that the uh, misunderstanding how neurotransmitter dopamine operates for reward behavior actually works and can be altered by conscious behavior. So it is really a impulsive behavior versus conscious behavior. And the idea of taking a break of a repetitive pattern of excitement and stimulation can be triggered by interaction of digital technology that practices avoiding pleasurable activities. We need to undo some of our bad habits, declutter our life, declutter our brain, then allow time for self-reflection and do some meditation, some form of biomedical feedback or biomental feedback and some degree of personal happiness. Detractors, however, of dopamine fasting say that though the overall concept of dopamine fasting appears to be very unscientific, because this chemical may not have a vital role in everyday life. And reducing it in a person and removing a particular stimulus from social media cannot reduce the levels of dopamine in the body. Said Kiara McCabe, a neuroscience professor at University of Reading. And probably the concept of resetting by avoiding dopamine triggers for a short time could actually, she called it even nonsense. Cameron Safai said that who actually has promoted dopamine fasting agrees that the name is misleading. But the purpose is not literally to reduce dopamine in the body. But it's to reduce the impulsive behaviors that are rewarded by it. Because we all know that when we go on our smartphone or our computer or on our internet game, it's an impulsive behavioral activity. And therefore, having dopamine fasting is a need of it. Beyond impulse control, which we know is all prefrontally controlled, it's never conclusively proven that technology hardens the brain on dopamine effects. Technology use induces dopamine response on par with any other pleasurable or enjoyable experience. Roughly 50 to 100 percent increases it. We know cocaine and mephentamine, which are addictive drugs, cause a dopamine spike of 350 percentage cocaine and 1200 percentage mephentamine. In addition, the dopamine receptors themselves, the cells in the brain which are activated by different ways of dopamine release, respond differently to tech use and then they do to substance abuse. So currently there is no evidence that they become less sensitive to dopamine with frequent tech use. And this is an area of research which I urge all of you to do, comparing it with substance abuse. Obviously, it is erroneous to assume that avoiding dopamine spice may upregulate dopamine receptors and may cause increased motivation or pleasure. However, Freeing oneself from bad habits may free up time for healthier habits like physical activity and may actually increase the gray matter volume on the multiple brain parts related to the reward system. So there is some science which needs evidence-based generation in a systematic way. However, the practice of dopamine fasting is not clearly defined in what entails on technologies, with what frequency it should be done and how it should be worked. Some proponents say, the process of avoiding online technology, others extending it from abstaining from all work like exercise, physical contact, unnecessary conversation. A proponent of the practice of passes, the purpose is not literally to reduce dopamine in the body, but to reduce the impulsive behavior which are rewarded by that. And one account suggests that practice of avoiding such cues, like hearing the ring of smartphone, can trigger impulsive behaviors like just the aroma of the smell of the food which you are going to eat now. And this is actually remaining on the smartphone after the call to play in the game. So in one sense, dopamine fasting is a reaction to technology firms that have engineered their services to keep people hooked. And remember, you are addicted and cluttered with all this information. So dopamine fasting has to be seen to resemble the fasting tradition in many religions. An extreme form of dopamine fasting is complete sensory deprivation where all external stimuli should be removed to promote the sense of calm and well-being like one will do it in Vipassana or one would do it in the form of extreme forms of meditative behavior. There are clear-cut goals in digital detox. You need to be motivated to start digital detox. You need to be concerned that you have developed addictive behavior there is some identity and there is a clear-cut disorder now emerging called internet addiction disorder. The aim of the digital detox is to reduce stress and anxiety. When you have overuse of technology and when you take it away, 
it causes anxiety and stress. We need to refocus on offline social interactions and actions. We need to go back to nature and reconnect with nature. We need to improve mindfulness and improve one's ability to decrease distractions and eliminate multitasking. So clearly there is a impact of technology on sleep and sleep is clearly you know, disrupted by digital detox. We need sleep because if we sleep less, the tissue perfusion of the CSF is going to be reduced on the cortical surface. When we are up, the interstitial space, the CSF flow and the metabolites won't accumulate. So sleep is the housekeeper of the brain. And restricting sleep will restrict the human transcriptome. And the light and life, which has been described by changes, and this is a slide borrowed from my friend Dr. Krishna Sheshati, clearly says that the time course is understood through changes brought about by heat and sun rays. We also have the science of the clock regulator melatonin, the functional splanchnology, the blue glasses, which increase the melatonin, the chemical signal of darkness. And therefore, we need rehab protocols for the same. We have a lot of good natural sources of melatonin, like cherries, cocoa and dark chocolate, about 70%. The bananas and the ginger, the cereal oats, corns and barleys, peanut butters, the almonds and the walnuts and the pistachio, the vegetables, the spices, the herbs and the green teas. And clearly, we need to have the right advice. Light emitted by telephone and TV screens shut off the pineal gland from melatonin secretion and make it difficult for us to sleep. And the best light, which has the best impact while sleeping, is red light in the room. And that doesn't actually stimulate the melatonin. Also, we need to avoid tea, coffee, cola because they reduce the melatonin secretion and should not be taken at night. And one should have a light early dinner representing. Otherwise, it will have insomnia and aging will be fast. So, inducting before any digital dopamine fasting is sleep hygiene. A good six hours of sleep, maintaining a regular wake and sleep wake cycle, having loose, comfortable clothing, taking a bath, the rise and fall taking the medications of you know, diabetes, hypertension, or endocrine, or thyroid on time, a cool and dark environment. Soothing pre-sleep routine is very important, and listening to music is very important. Don't enforce sleep. Avoid alcohol and nicotine and caffeine. Avoid heavy dinners and junk food. You avoid using bed electronic devices like mobiles, games, and laptops. And avoid that light transmission from street lamps, alarm clocks, and DVD players which keep you awake. Yoga is great, balasana, talasana, restorative yoga postures, the rock and by roll, or the winding down twist are very important. So clearly now there is a lot of AI for digital detox. This is a recent article on digital medicine, appending the model of AI adaptation for detox. But let's keep it simple. For digital detox, I have three simple things. A, set clear boundaries, start defining a specific time period of the day when you're completely going to disconnect from social media. It could be a daily break for a few hours or a full day off from week or a longer break on a weekend retreat. To replace the social media time with hobbies, like reading a book, painting, practicing an instrument, doing yoga, self-care ritual, and enrich your life with new experiences. And third is practice mindfulness and self-realization. Take the opportunity to reflect your relationship with social media and its impact on your well-being being mindful of how to feel that you're not continuously connected with us. So from screens to serene, say goodbye to pixels and say hello to peace with digital detox. And that's something we need to recognize. No posting, no liking, just living and no FOMO. No, the FOMO has been one of the biggest challenges in our modern day life. The mindfulness tip for the day for today is unplug from technology, periodically reduce Stress and reconnect yourself when you feel it is appropriate. AI has entered us. A daily life use of AI, like a Siri, a Koksharna, a Alexa, a Google Assistant are all here. And AI in healthcare, we are tapping. We are trying to unlock the relevant information from big, massive amount of data to assist clinical decision making. Whether it's a retinal scan, decision support from monitoring, whether it's self-management tools or population mechanisms. You can actually even create a digital tool. At IIT Madras, they have tried to create a digital twin and a patient digital twin to heal disrupted you know, metabolism. And we have tried to use that for remission of diabetes and many other things. So in the diabetes world, there are some diabetes digital care markers. 
For example, we need to ensure that the hardware and the software make. We need to have hybrid devices for monitoring glucose and delivering insulin, particularly in the type 1 diabetes space. We need to couple technology with education and improve lives and health of people living with diabetes, including happiness. So fast has been the developments and rapid and making it so complex in diabetes digital technology that the barrier has been to implement it in patient and providers. And the predictive big data analysis from AI can fill up that gap and assist healthcare professionals like this. We need to beat stigma. We need to have psychological trips. We need to have a posture, a positive image. We need to know that, you know, when you're talking to a person you love, your eyes will dilate. And we need to ensure that beat the stigma and stop the phone. We need to clearly change our mindset. If a digital detox or dopamine fasting has to be occurred, we need to kill our ego. We need to value love. We need to keep our smile. We need to ignore gossip. We need to achieve success. We need to distance jealousy. We need to acquire confidence and knowledge and trust the confidence you have. So completely killing ego, valuing love, keeping the smile, ignoring gossip, achieving success, distancing from jealousy, acquiring knowledge, wisdom, and trusting confidence is important. So habits and behavior change are life hacks. If you're uninspired, take a walk in nature. If you have a bad mood, just go and do and work out and release yourself. If you're thinking too much, meditate. If you're tired, take good 7-8 hours of sleep and reboot yourself. If you're sad, listen to music. If you're low on focus, cut the social media. If you're bored, socialize. Mindset hacks are as important as physical hacks. Keep an open mind. Keep learning from new things. Take one baby step at a time. Think about the words you say. Measure them. Stay positive and practice gratitude. Find something which makes you happy and learn how to handle criticism constructively. You're very poor at criticism. So clearly in the mantra of diabetes, prevention, sleeping and time and sleeping well is important, but doing an hour of digital detox is equally important. We need to eat slowly. We need to eat less. We need to eat on time. We need to have a large meal in the morning. We need to eat right. We need to move more and walk more and do yoga. But we need to smile, sleep well and sleep on time. Develop a digital hygiene. Because the digital disruptions of our life are damaging your energy metabolism. Stop scrolling in the morning and night. It's an incredible way to kill your momentum. Flooding your brain early morning with cortisol and unearned dopamine in the morning will leave you slow, sluggish and cluttered. So don't look at your phone for the first hour and the last hour of the day and make your life happy and healthy and spread the message of happiness and gratitude worldwide. Thank you so much for a patient hearing.